continuing. He then said that he was more virtuous than Hadra Isa, and he sometimes said that he was Mikhail in his booklet Abi in volume 3, page 23, and that he was Hadra Ibrahim and Hadrat Nur and Hadrat Musa, and that he was Hadrat Isa and Hadrat Dawood and Hadrat Yusuf and Hadrat Yahya, to such an extent that he claimed that he was Hadrat Muhammad. In fact, some of his texts show that he said that he was more virtuous than all of the Anbiya and the leader of the Anbiya. Looking at his books to get conviction about this, you can see in Nazul al Masi, page 964, Izlat al Ahwam, page 253, Hakikat al Wahi, page 22, and Barahin e Ahmedia, page 5 and 9. His claims kept on changing until he remained firm finally, and there is no doubt that he claimed Nabuah and that revelation comes to him. This, is the, this was his claim. He also said that belief in his revelation is compulsory, like how it is with the Quran, without any difference, and that it is blasphemy and deviation if someone rejects his revelation. He also said that whoever does not believe in his Nabuah will find that the Quran announces that Anabi Muhammad is the final messenger, and that Ahadith are replete with the fact that there is no Rasul or Nabi after him. We, it is unanimous there is no Nabi after all, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in summary, this lie has come with a lot of claims in order to confuse the general Muslims and in order to take them towards rejecting necessary parts for Muslims. After his death, his friends split into two groups. One group claims that he was a Majaddid and Mahdi, not a Nabi or Rasul. The centre of these people is in Lahore. And the second group claims that he was a Rasul and Nabi, and that is the promised Masih bin Maryam. Except that he did not come with a new Sharia, and the previous Sharia was not abrogated. which they claim was like the uh, Sharia of Harun in the Sharia of Musa. Some of them claim that he is a Rasul and Nabi that came with the new Sharia and the new revelation in that previous religions were abrogated. They also say that salvation is confined to following him, following him specifically Mirza Ghulam. These followers claim that they inherited from their first leader and these are tricks employed in their propagation. They put on the clothes of Muslims, they read the Qur'an, they perform Salah, and they please you with their mouths, and what their hearts conceal is greater. They exploit the ignorance of the Muslims and non-Muslims with different types of tricks and plans. They make it apparent that they are together with the general Muslims, and they hide the claims of Nabwa until it is easy for them to make others accept what they say easily. It is for this reason that the, this calamity has become common in India. This fitness spreading like waves, and, is, and it was, and it's has moved beyond um, the, the common borders of India. And this fitna is spreading also to other places like Iraq. And may Allah protect it and all the Muslim countries from their fitna and the fitna of Masih and Dajjal. Question. What is your opinion, O scholars, about this man and those who become part of this group? Do they have any share of Islam or have they left the fold of Islam? Is it permissible for the Ummah to link to them in any way, or is it necessary for the Muslims to cut off from them? Answer. All praise is due to Allah. This man, and whatever was said of him, if he is not mad, then he is a greater kafir than the worst of the Jews and Christians. And this stance is so clear that it does not demand any proof. Um, to clarify, uh, the word kafir is used um, for someone who rejects. Um, so Jews and Christians are referred to in this sense because they reject Islam. This stance is so clear that it does not demand any proof. This is known clearly from the deen of Islam. In fact, the one who does not say that he is a kafir after his deviated way has become established and his detestable stance has become clear. He is a kafir and it's compulsory for him to repent. This short reply suffices the question regarding those that follow him. Their first group is the same because they also affirm his blasphemous talk. Regarding the first group, their kufr is established from the beginning and its claims of kufr and take them outside of the fall of Islam. As far as the second group affirming the first of its claims of Tajdid, and that he is a Mahdi, as it is a baseless on its own and is deviated, it does not take them out of the ruling of the first group regarding the beliefs of Tajdid and Mahdi, together, the, together with the ruling upon them of Kufr and Shirk, and Allah knows best. The Fatwa 197 of the former Mufti of the Kingdom, Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim al Sheikh, banish the Qadianis from the Kingdom, from Muhammad bin Ab Ibrahim to Sheikh Abdullah bin Akil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In reference to your correspondence of the 7th of Rajab 1388, including the question regarding the status of the sect spreading in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia by the entry of the Qadianis, we wish to inform you that the entry of the Qadianis into the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia poses a greater threat and immense danger. Laziness or ease in this matter cannot be tolerated. 
A person of this sect came two years ago, and I told the government to throw him out immediately. I emphasise and will con continue to do so upon the kingdom to think that this matter is pondered over properly and deeply. We wish that you have complete knowledge of this reality, and we ask Allah to bless you with divine ability for every good. The Fatwa of Mufti of Jamia al-Azhar al-Sharif, 2009. All praises due to Allah, and peace and salutations be upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We present the answer after seeing the special question regarding the Kalyanis and the stance of Islam regarding their beliefs and performing Salah behind them. Answer. The Kalyanis are a group that is at variance with Islam. It is a dangerous group and is based upon the foundations copying those of Nabwa of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Kalyani sect was founded by Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Kalyani in the 19th century in India. All its beliefs lead to kufr and among their beliefs the following. The founders thinks that the soul of Masih came into him and that whatever he speaks is the speech of Allah like the Quran and the Sunnah. Kadian is third after Makkah and Medina and Hajj takes place towards it, not to Makkah. And whoever goes to Kadian, he will see heavenly signs and things against the norm. Uh, these current, uh, these claims are actually denied by um, the present day Kadianis, although it's referenced in uh, books from their, uh, from their leaders. The founder thinks that he was appointed by Allah for the reformation of man upon the way of Masih, and he gets revelation and sightings. The founder thinks that the Qur'an and Sunnah testifies to his Nabwa, and he said that certain things came to him that do not come to anyone from the universe. He who does not pledge allegiance to him and adopt their viewpoints should be treated like a Kafir. It is sufficient for this group to be deviated in Kafir due to their claim of Nabwa after Rasulullah They go against the Qur'an, Sunnah and the unanimity of the Muslim scholars. If these are their beliefs, then they are outside of the fold of Islam, because they go against many unanimous issues. For this reason, the rulings of non-Muslims will apply to them regarding enter the masjid. Allah states, it is not for the mushrikeen that they attend Allah's masajid, when they testify to the kufr within themselves. For these reasons, it is forbidden for them to enter the masajid of the Muslims. Lajnat al-Fatwa, 23rd of June 2009. The Fatwa of Sheikh Hasnain, Muhammad Makluf, the head mufti of Egypt and part of a group of great scholars of Jami' al-Azhar and member of Rabita Alam al-Islami. There is no difference of opinion in the Kufr of the Qadianis. Every Muslim should be warned of them. I have given this fatwa many times. Hasnain Muhammad Makhlouf, adapted from Fatwa Qatam al -Nabwa. The fatwa of the great propagator Sheikh Muhammad Muntasir al-Qatani al-Maghribi, the former teacher at Masjid al-Nabawi. Indeed, these Qadianis are a disgrace. They have no share in deen. May the curse of Allah, his angels, and all the people be upon them. Whoever thinks that they are Muslim, after the clear texts of his books, over whoever thinks that Whoever thinks that I'm Muslim, after the clear text of his books, over and above believing him to be a Nabi, is, an, is a Kafir. Muhammad Muntasir al-Qatani, stamped by Abu Bakr Mahmoud Jummi, the head judge of Nigeria and member of Rabita al-Alam al-Islami. The Fatwa of the Syrian Scholars We came to know of the beliefs of the Qadianis and their founder, Mursla Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, from his books. He claimed that he was the awaited Mahdi, that he was Isa, that he claimed Nabwa. For this reason, we give fatwa to the Muslims in the world of the kufr of this liar, and kufr of those who believe in anything he brings, and the kufr of those who follow him and spread his false claims. The 23rd of Jamad al-Ullah, 1393. And it was signed by Sheikh Muhammad Awama, Zahir al-Nasir, the former head of the center of Sirah and Sunnah of King Fahad, Ahmed al-Khalash, the Khatib of Jami al-Madani, Muhammad Abdul Fat al Batamwi Abdul Khayrat, Mufti Nuruddin, Abdul Qadir Ali, Khatib of Jami As Asadilia, Muhammad Naji Abisali, a teacher at Jami Umawa. Fatwa 2 of the scholars of Syria. All praises due to Allah. Peace and salutations be upon the final messenger, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We received a question directed to the Muslim scholars, and we studied the baseless beliefs and rare thoughts of the Qadianis. After studying it and the decisions made in accordance to Islamic beliefs, we produce the following fatwa. Whoever believes that Nabwa has not come to an end with Muhammad and jihad against the Kuffar is abrogated, and that Masih was killed and crucified, and that any person today has the capacity to abrogate and change laws, believes such things that are against the basic foundations. Through these, a person leaves the fold of Islam and is a kafir. This fatwa was verified in a gathering of scholars in Syria and Damascus, under the leadership of Sheikh Hassanain Katan Hassan Habnarka al Maidani on the 1st of Rajab 1393. The Qadiani sect do not believe in the finality of prophethood of Muhammad. Through this, they oppose the verses of the finality of prophethood from the Quran. The Qadianis also reject other Islamic beliefs due to this. 
and we give a fatwa of kufr upon anyone who adopts their deen, religion, or has their beliefs. And Allah knows best. Abdul Yasir Abidin. Fatwa 3 of Sheikh Abdul Yasir Abidin, head mufti of Syria, fatwa of Mufti Nablus of Palestine, 2852 33 2005. 1426 after Hijrah. Mufti Nablus. Question. What is the ruling regarding the Qadiani or Ahmadiyya sect? We want the Sharia ruling regarding them. Fatwa. All praises due to Allah and peace and salutations be to, upon the Nabi, after whom there is no uh, Nabi. The Ahmadiyya sect, called Qadianiyats, began in 1900 through the help of the British government in India. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, who died in 1908, played a great role in the formation of the Qadiani movement. He became famous for committing fraud regarding Deen. He is known among his followers from a mixed nature and imbalance through pattern. He has a number of representatives. They have written a number of books for their sect, and they have also interpolated translation of the Qur'an. Among their outstanding beliefs are that Ghulam is the promised Masi, Nabuwa did not end with Muhammad, Qadian is like Makkah and Medina, in fact, more virtuous than Makkah and Medina, and it is their Qibla, and they make Hajj there. They believe that it is baseless to wage jihad against um, non-Muslims when they oppose us, and it is necessary to blindly follow them because they rule their affairs. They also believe that all Muslims are kafir until they accept Qadianism. They say that wine and other food and things are permissible. Here's a book called Tazkira, other than the Qur'an. In the light of these beliefs, they will be classified as kafar and deviated, and deviating is not permissible for them to lead Muslims. However, before a ruling is passed on anyone, it is necessary to represent the viewpoints of Islam to him, and the dangers of the Qadiani viewpoints should be put forward. If they remain firm on the Qadiani viewpoint, and proof is established against them, and they do not return from it, the ruling of Kufa will be passed regarding them, and Allah knows best. And that was signed by Sheikh Ahmed Khalid Shabash on the 8th of Jumad al-Ukra, 1426. That's the 14th of July, 2005. The Fatwa of Sheikh Muhammad Kifayatullah, the Grand Mufti of India. The Mufti was asked about Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani and his followers. He replied that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claimed that he is a Mujaddid and Mahdi and Masi and Nabi. And all of these claims are found in his books in abundance, but it, so, in such a way that it is not possible for anyone to interpret them or reject them. It is known that the claim of Nabi after the final Rasulullah, Messenger Muhammad, وسلم, is kufr. The deen or religion of Islam is not happy and will never be happy that some new Mutanabbi is considered to be part of Islam, whether he claims Nubwa, Zili or Baruzi, whether he claims to have a Sharia or not. There are other reasons that show the kufr of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani. 1. Disgracing Hadrat Isa. 2. Rejection of the Quranic miracles and mocking them through baseless interpretations. All these beliefs are found in his books, clearly, like clear daylight at noon. The rejection of the Lahori's all their interpretations do not save this group of Lahoris from Kufr. These two groups, Lahori and Qadiani, call to Islam. But the Muslim scholars give fatwa, and the ruling states that they are out of the fold of Islam. Muhammad Kifayatullah. The fatwa of Dar al-Ulum Deoband, India. Question. A person became a Qadiani and has Qadiani beliefs. Is, not, is this person a kafir or not? Does his Muslim wife remain in his nikah or not? Fatwa. The scholars are unanimous about the kufr of Mirza Qadiani because his beliefs and statements are kufr according to everyone. Whoever enters into Qadianism and has the same beliefs as Mirza Qadiani by believing him to be a Nabi like the rest of the Qadianis is a kafir and renegade. It is also established in Islamic jurisprudence that the kufr of a spouse leads to the breakup of the nikah. Therefore this woman has come out of the nikah of this person who has entered Qadianism. The fatwa of Jami al-Hadith al the question was regarding Mirzais and other sects. The Mufti replied and said therein, Mirza is a kufr without doubt. The fatwa of the Brelvi scholars of kufr for the one who doubts the kufr of the Qadianis. Question. What is your view regarding the person who accepts Mirza Qadiani as the Mujaddid of the time? Fatwa. It is necessary for the Mujaddid to be a Muslim. As far as Mirza Qadiani is concerned, he is a kafir, and whoever doubts in his kufr and punishment has done kufr. The Fatwa of Mufti Mahmud, the Grand Mufti of Pakistan. It has been proven that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani claimed Nabwa. This is found in his books and writings and the belief of his followers. The belief of the finality of the prophethood is among the foundational Islamic beliefs.
no Nabi is to come after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with any type of Nabwa. This door is locked. This has been the belief for 14 centuries. There is no interpretation in Islamic beliefs in this aspect. Whoever makes interpretation in Islamic beliefs that are foundational will not, some, will not sometimes be a kafir, but making interpretations in Islamic beliefs is khufr. And this is the opinion of the philosopher Muhammad Iqbal. He wrote in his daily column, The people of Islam are one solid religious group. It has specific boundaries. Ayman, Tawheed, Iman in the Anbiya, Iman in the finality of Nabu of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The truth is that the final Iman is that which differentiates a Muslim from a Kafir. It is the factor that is considered whether an individual or group is part of the religion or not. For example, the Brahmin sect believe in Allah in the Risalat of Muhammad. Despite this, they are not considered Muslims. This is because they are like the Qadianis. They believe that revelation carries on like how it used to come down upon the Anbiya. They do not believe in the finality of prophethood of Muhammad. No Muslim sect has trespassed this differentiating, differentiating boundary. In, the, in Iran, the Baha'is belied the finality of prophethood, but they said clearly that they are a separate nation and not part of the Muslims. I see one of two paths to be adopted with the Qadianis. Either they follow the Baha'is and are considered a separate nation and their baseless interpretations are left revolving around the finality of the prophethood and they believe with proper understanding, or their new interpretations are nothing but a face in order to, to include them amongst the Muslims, and therefore thereby they become successful in their political aims. The Eastern poet says, in presenting a solution to the Qadiani problem, the best way for the government, according to my opinion, is that the Qadiani should be considered to be a separate sect. This is the demands of the political Qadianis. The Muslims will act with them like how they act with other non-Muslims. When he's referring to sect in this status, it's not referring to a, a sect within Islam, it's referring to a sect as in a different religion. The decision of the Pakistani parliament in the time of Dul Fikar Bhutto. The Pakistani parliament was presented a case dealing with the Qadianis. They heard testimony from the heads of Jami Ahmadiyya in the city of Rabwa and those from Jami Ahmadiyya in Lahore, known as the Lahori Qadianis. They decided unanimously on a number of decisions. This was a special meeting held on the 7th of September 1974. The Prime Minister of Pakistan also attended the meeting held on the 21st of September 1974. The law number was 49 of 1974. Whichever person does not believe firmly in the finality of prophethood of Muhammad, or he recognises the one claiming Nabwa in any form after Muhammad, or he recognises that the claimant of Nabwa is a Nabi or a former, he is a non-Muslim in light of the law. The Parliament of Pakistan issued a law in 1974 that the Qadiani sect is a minority non-Muslim group. In addition, the Qadianis were stopped from using the Islamic terms, like they say Sahaba for their friends, or Mirzaghulam Ahmed, Umm al muminin for his wife, Ali Bayt for his housefolk, Khalafi Rashidin for those who took up his call, and Masjid for the places of worship, Azan for their call to prayer, Islam for their beliefs, Kufar for those who are not Qadiani, and other such terms that are harming the outstanding features of Islam. May Allah bless Muhammadiyya al-Haq, who put forward the decision number 298 in 1984, after the Pakistan parliament agreed. It became a decision of the Pakistani government that they prevented usage of the Islamic terms. The law passed in the time of General Muhammad Diyah al-Haq, 1984, number 298, for the protection of Islam and the honour of Muslims. The Qadianis or Lahoris, or as they call themselves Ahmadis, will be fined or jailed for three years on the following basis. 1. If one of their people used the word Amir al-Muhminin, Khalifat al-Muhminin, or Khalifat al-Muslimin, or Sahabi, or put the words or addresses, as such, any person beside the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if one of them says Umm al muminin for anyone other than the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if anyone of them says Al Labait for anyone other than the family members of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if anyone of them says Masjid for their places of prayer, if any one of them says Azan for their call to prayer, if any one of them says that their deen religion is Islam, or calls himself a Muslim, or calls people to their beliefs, or does any action that harms the fundamental outstanding characteristics of Islam. The next fatwa is of Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Sabil, Imam Khatib of Majlul Haram in Makkah Makrama, regarding the descent of Hadra Isa and Qadianis. All praises due to Allah and peace and salutations be upon the, the best of creation, Muhammad. There is no doubt that the one who rejects the descent of Hadra Isa after he knows that which is explained in the hadith is a kafir because he's belying Rasulullah, the one who belies Allah and his Rasul messenger has done a deed of kufr. The deviated Qadiani sect denies that which Allah revealed upon Muhammad 
such that rejection of the descent of Hadra Issa is part of their beliefs and their thoughts that he has passed away a natural death. There is no doubt that this is kufr and deviation and belying the book of Allah. Allah says, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but it was made so to seem. Part of this deviated sex belief is rejection of the finality of the prophethood of Rasulullah. This is also kufr because it is belying the statement of Allah. Muhammad is not the father of any one of you, but he is the Rasul of Allah and the final Nabi, Surah Azab. We ask Allah to bless Islam and the Muslims with honour and that he does not cause our hearts to go astray after he has guided them. Muhammad bin Abdullah Sabil, 22nd of Shawal, 1389. And the scholars of Hadith of Medina Munawara stamped this fatwa as well. Among them were Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani, Sheikh Abdul Qadir bin Shayba al-Hamd, teacher at al-Masjid al-Nabawi and Jami' al-Islamiyah in Medina Munawara, Sheikh Badr al Alam Mirthni Muhajir Madani, Sheikh Abdul Ghafur Abbasi Muhajir Madani, Sheikh Al Hadith Muhammad Zakaria Kandalawi. The fatwa of Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz regarding the ascent of Hadra Isa to the heavens in a living state. Question What is the ruling regarding the persons who say that Hadra Isa passed away? Answer It is proven from the proofs of the Quran and the authentic Sunnah that Isa bin Maryam was not killed nor did he pass away. Allah lifted him, lifted him up in a living state. He will descend towards the end of time as a just judge. Whoever said that Hadra Isa passed away and he will not descend during the end of times has opposed the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, and has made a great error. The ruling of Kufr will be given regarding such a person after the message has reached him and after proof has been established against him because of belying Allah and his Rasul. The fatwa of Shaykh Abdul Rahman bin Abi Shuaib al Barqatil al Maghribi. After praising Allah, he said that the Qadiani claim goes against the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Whoever believes the descent of Hadra Isa at the end of time and that he will rule with the Sharia of Rasulullah is a kafir. Abdurrahman bin Abi Shuaib, 12th of Dhul Qadha, 1387 or 1968. The, the Fatwa of Sheikh Muhyiddin, Mufti of Madrasa Ashraf Lalum, Dhaka, Bangladesh. I say and Allah grants ability, whoever rejects the life of Hadra Isa and is being lifted to the heavens, and his descent before Qiyamah, or claims that he is more virtuous than Hadra Isa, or he rejects the finality of the prophethood and claims that he is a Nabi after our Nabi Muhammad, whether Zuli or Baruzi, and rejects the necessary aspects of Deen, is a Kafir and murdered, and out of the fold of Islam. This is based on the Qur'an, Sunnah, and the unanimity of the Ummah, Ijma. This is from Muhyiddin, Sheikh Shamsuddin, the Emir of Jamiat al-Umar ulama Islam of Bangladesh, who also stamped this fatwa. The fatwa of Dar al-Lum band of Kufa for the one who believes that Mirza is a Majadid. Ah, just before that actually, it's worth mentioning that um, one of the uh, contentions that the Qadianis raise is that they say that um, if Isa alayhi salam, returns, then that would be a prophet coming after the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Obviously this is absolute nonsense. Um, Isa alayhi salam, was a prophet before Muhammad, and because he was taken up alive, he was still um, he, he was still that same prophet. He he didn't pass away, so he was still and always will have been a prophet before the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this uh, contention of the Qadianis is nonsense. Uh, the next fatwa of Dar al band of Kufa for the one who belies, believes that Muzagul is a Majadid question. We believe in Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we follow him just like how we have faith in Mirza Qadiani that he's a Majadid, and for following Nabi we will get benefit and munificence. What is the ruling of Sharia regarding us? This is a question from the Qadianis. Fatwa. It is clear that the one who has Islamic, Islamic beliefs and he also has blasphemous beliefs or rejects any matters that are proven is a kafir. Mirza Qadiani is a kafir and murdered because of his beliefs over and above his writings. Whoever has Islamic beliefs and be believes that this kafir and murtad is a Muslim, over and above believing him to be majadid, or someone that attaining the munificence of Nabu'a is also a kafir. This is because he thinks that a kafir is a Muslim, and he thinks kufr to be Islam. Once it is proven that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani is a kafir, because of his claims of Nabu'a, and is disgracing the Anbiya. So wh whoever thinks that this kafir is a majadid, or attains the munificence of Nabu'a, is no doubt a person of kufr. This is from Fatwa Dal Alum Deoband, volume 12, page 428-429. The Fatwa of Sheikh Sayyid Nazir Hussain Dalahwi from the Al Hadith. Question. What does scholars say regarding the person who says that Isa, Isa bin Maryam passed away and the promised Messiah is him? 
is the person following him a, a Muslim or a Kafir? Answer. Whoever says that Isa alayhi salam, passed away and claims reported regarding himself that he is the awaited Masih is a great liar and rejecter of the Quran and the Hadith. Allah says, There will be none among the people of the book except that they will believe in him before his demise. From Anisa 159. Ibn Abbas and Abu Huraira and others have said so. It is quite clear and is mentioned in Tafsir Ibn Kathir and Fatul Qadir of Shawkani that these verses show that Hadra Isa is alive and did not die. It is explained in authentic ahadith that he will come towards the end of time in Syria. He will kill the Dajjal and the people will be saved from the trials and tribulations of Dajjal. The nation of Yajuj and Majuj will be destroyed through the door of Hadra Isa. He will close the door of evil and corruption and he will spread justice and equity. All the Jews and Christians present at the time will believe in him, and this will remain the state of affairs for seven years. Hadra Isa salam, will then pass away. This is mentioned in the books of Hadith, and this is the belief of all of the al sunnah wal Jamaah. There are a few people belonging here belonging to a deviated sect that say that the Ahadith detail in the descent of Hadra Isa contradict the Ahadith showing the finality of the prophethood. They reject the authentic hadith speaking about the descent of Hadra Isa salam, and they say it is abrogated. In this way, deficient understanding takes a person to the pit of deviation. This is because there is no contradiction between the hadith such that there is no doubt that Muhammad وسلم, is the final Nabi and there is no Nabi after him and that Hadra Isa will not come with a new Sharia alien to Islam. In summary, this is the belief of the Al-Sunnah wal Jamaah that Hadra Isa alayhi salam, is alive and has not passed away. Whoever believes that he has passed away or was killed and claims for himself that he is Isa, there is no doubt in his kufr. Those who believe in these beliefs are also out of the fold of Islam. From Sayyid Muhammad Nazir Hussain Fatwa Nazaria, Volume 1, page 4 and 5. The Fatwa of Sheikh Hassanayn Makhlouf, the Grand Mufti of Egypt. The Qadiani sect is a deviated one from Islam. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani founded it in the 19th century in India. He said that jihad against the British is forbidden and that Hadra Isa alayhi salam, passed away in Kashmir and is buried there. His grave could be specified. He thinks that the soul of Hadra Isa alayhi salam, came into him and that Damascus, in which he is to descend at the end of time, is actually Qadian and is named Masjid al-Aqsa. And he also claims that it is the third, the third holiest place after Makkah Medina and it is not compulsory to perform Hajj there. He also says that whoever does not pledge allegiance to him is a kafir. Regarding Hadra Isa, al-Islam, Muslims are unanimous that he was not killed nor crucified and that Allah stopped the banner Israel from, from him when they intended to kill him. Allah made them confused and gave the form to a hypocrite among them. His punishment was being killed and the consequence that Hadra Isa had was being lifted to the heavens with honour, as the Quran says, and they did not kill him nor did they crucify him, but it was made to them to seem so. And they definitely did not kill him, but Allah took him to himself. Surah Nisa 157-158 He was lifted to the heavens like how Muhammad was lifted on the night of Miraj, with his soul and body in a wakeful state. There is nothing strange in it, for it is a miracle that cannot be judged according to the general nature of things. It is the power of Allah. The statement of Qadian is that the soul of Hadra Isa came, came into him. Ayyam Mirza is baseless, lies and kufr. From Hassanay Muhammad Makhlouf, Rabi al 1384. 1394. The Fatwa of Sheikh Al-Azhar Jad al-Haq, Ali Jad al-Haq, which is adapted from the Azra magazine, 1985, page 1921. All praise is due to Allah, and peace and salutations be upon the Rasul of Allah. I studied the book of Sheikh Abu Bakr Najjar, head of the Muslim body in South Africa, dated 5th of Safar, 1402. It was explained therein that the followers of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed are split into two groups. The first are Qadianis. They clearly reject that Rasulullah is the final Nabi. The second is the Ahmadiyya Lahore. These, this group claims that Mirza Ghulam is a Majazi Nabi and he is the awaited Masi and he is the Mahdi and the reformer. He is also the Namajadid sent at the end of the 14th century. He also claimed that Isa salam, is the son of Joseph the carpenter and he does not believe in the miracles of the Anbiya. The people have stood up. The Imam in Cape Town, South Africa, wants to know the ruling regarding the rights of the Muslims and about performing salat in their masajid and burying their dead in their graveyards and about du'a for them similar to what we make for us. They testify to the oneness of Allah and to Rasulullah and they perform salat and fast and give zakat. The following questions were posed to Sheikh Abu Bakr Najjar. 1. Are the Ahmadiyya Lahore group Muslims or not? 
Two, do they have the right, if they're not considered Muslims, to enter the masjid of the Muslims to perform salah and to bury their dead in the graveyards of the Muslims? We wish to add that the Ahmadiyya are a branch of the Qadianis, about whom Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, one of the great Punjabi thinkers, said that the Qadianis are an insult to the Nabuwa of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They have things against Islam, and they are a separate re religion. The Qadianis are not even part of the great Muslim Ummah. This is because his group are opposing the unanimity of the Muslims, and they, the Muslims, are unanimous about all the necessary aspects of deen. From amongst their innovations is the tafsir of the verse, He is the final Nabi. They went against the majority who say that Rasulullah is the final Nabi, and there is no Nabi or Rasul to come until the day of Qiyamah. The Qadianis say regarding the verse, the final Nabi, for the first time in Muslim history, Muhammad is the final Nabi, i.e. the brand. Whoever comes now after him will be a brand or a stamp of his nabwa branded with the seal of affirming it. This is such a baseless tafsir that it takes the person outside of Islam. The Ahmadiyya sect took to the same path as the original deviators, Qadianis, and the Ahmadiyya are linked to Musa Gulm Ahmad Qadiani. His books are full of claims of nabwa. He clearly states this. He says that anyone who does not follow him is a kafir. This is despite the fact that some of his followers say that he did not write these things in reality. All of these are from his books, which um, are readily available um, and still available. Um, and there are actually libraries of these books which can be read uh, by anybody. They use the name of the promised Masi for him, or that the soul of Masi came into him. And these miracles are foretelling when a solar or lunar eclipse will occur. If the beliefs of this group is like this, then they are not upon Islam. The Lahori group is further deviated, and that it is in the group books of their founder that rejects that he is the Masi and was born without a father. One of our thinkers, Muhammad Ali, says that Isa al -Islam, was born from Joseph the carpenter, and Maryam Radilah, who was married to him, and Masi was born in a natural manner. He represents, he presents some interpolated verses to back his claim. He also states that the belief that Hadra Isa al -Islam, was born without a father is not among the compulsory beliefs and is from the basic Christian doctrines. This statement is from among the fabrications of the Jews upon Hadra Isa bin Maryam, as the Quran states, and because of their kufr and their terrible slander of Maryam, both these groups, the Ahmadi and Qadianis, are far from Islam in their ways and methods, for there is no doubt that their beliefs in every part oppose that which the Muslims are unanimous upon from the time of Rasulullah, that he is a Nabi and Rasul from Allah and the seal of the Anbiya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said that he is the final Nabi and Allah has completed prophethood upon him, and there is no Nabi to come after him. Whatever this group attributes to its founder in terms of miracles like foretelling a solar or lunar eclipse, it cannot be counted as a miracle because the astronomers can tell of it and it happens repeatedly based on mathematical calculations. None of these people are counted as Ambiya. In fact, it is such knowledge that was completed and perfected ever since man is living on earth. If the beliefs of the Ahmadiyya and Qadiyan are such, then they have left the fold of Islam, such that they oppose the Islamic beliefs in Sharia in many ways, and things learnt in Islam by way of necessity, as explained before by Sheikh Abu Bakr Najjar, answering the question in the following man manner. Question. Is the Ahmadiyya Lahore group considered, considered to be part of the Muslims or not? Answer. If their beliefs are just as explained now, then they are out of the fold of Islam. Considering that they oppose many unanimous laws and matters as well as those things that are known by way of necessity, this is over and above their belying what is mentioned in the Qur'an, and there is no doubt that belying the Qur'an takes a person out of the fold of Islam, and such a person is not counted to be among the Muslims. Question. Do they have the right to enter the masajid of the Muslims in order to perform for Salah? Answer. This. The Qadianis and Ahmadiyya sect have left Islam with these beliefs, and they are free from the belief system and laws. They have become renegade from Islam. The laws of non-Muslims apply to them regarding entering the masjid. Allah says, It is not for the mushrikeen that they attend Allah's masajid when they testify to the kufr within themselves. They are the ones whose actions are wasted, and they shall live forever in the fire. Only those who should attend Allah's places of worship, who believe in Allah, and the last day, who establish Salah, who pay zakah, and who fear Allah. It is only they who are expected to be rightly guided. In the first verse, Allah has forbidden the non-Muslims from entering the masajid. This is through the manner of phrase. It is understood from, it is not for the mushrikeen that they attend Allah's masajid. Just as Ibadah refers to building the masajid and maintaining it, it also refers to standing in it for the worship of Allah. According to this meaning, the mushrikeen will not be allowed to build, maintain or stand in the houses of Allah, the masajid, while they are in Kufa. The translation was edited by A. H. Elias Mufti on Rajab, 1432, June 2011.
Uh, the book was published by Ketamon Novot Academy. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.